Hey, welcome to the sixth episode of Marks and Chill. And today we read the second part of the third manuscript. It's titled Private Property and Labor Political Economy as a Product of the Movement of Private Property. So today we're going to discuss how capitalism became a thing as a result of having private property. So according to Marx, the essence of private property is labor. Thus it's clear that only capitalism which acknowledged labor as its principle has glorified the energy and development of modern industry and made it a power within our consciousness. So only when capitalism presents labor as its backbone do we give it power and bring it into our own consciousness. This enlightened capitalism discovered within private property the essence of wealth, and it follows the monetary and mercantile system as if it's a religion in itself. Just as Luther recognized faith in religion as something in the external world and made it something of the inner substance of humans, the same happened with wealth. Wealth is something that was previously separate and independent from humans, and then became a part of humans and it's now seen as part of our essence. Under the guise of recognizing a person, the capitalism which considers labor its principle inevitably ends with a denial of that same person. And since that person no longer stands in an external relation to private property, but has themselves become this essence of private property, while was previously outside oneself, has now become a process of alienation. Another one. Another one. This capitalism begins by wanting to acknowledge human's independence, spontaneity, etc. But when it locates private property inside the human's own being, that person can no longer be conditioned to once again see private property as being outside themselves, despite being exposed or encouraged to think otherwise by their community, nation, or etc. This capitalism then establishes a universal energy which distinguishes all other bonds and establishes itself as the sole politics, the same universality, the sole limit, and the sole bond. Which is why capitalism must get rid of that hypocrisy if they want to continue to develop itself. And it does so by further focusing on the idea that labor is the sole essence of wealth by expressing that thinking the opposite is anti-human, and by presenting rent as a natural mode of private property and wealth. Capitalism must defend itself by saying that the backbone of capitalism is labor, and by expressing that to think anything but that is wrong. So basically, if capitalism doesn't present wealth as our direct result of labor, then there really isn't any basis for wealth or private property. Honestly, that really reminds me of any time you try to have a conversation with people, they automatically get very defensive about how rich people work really hard to be rich, right? Because it couldn't quite possibly be that we all exist within a system that doesn't make sense, that is unfair, and that will never give you the chance to acquire wealth. Now for the next part, we're going to talk about something called physiocracy. And let me read to you the definition so we're all on the same page. Physiocracy is an economic theory developed by a group of 18th century age of enlightenment French economists who believed that the wealth of nations derived solely from the value of land agriculture or land development and that agricultural products should be highly priced. The physiocrats made a significant contribution in their emphasis on productive work as the source of national wealth. This contrasted with earlier schools, particularly mercantilism, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, mercantilism, which often focused on the ruler's wealth, like the king, right, and the accumulation of gold or the balance of trade. Whereas the mercantilist school of economics held that value in the products of society was created at the point of sale by the seller exchanging their goods for more money than the products had previously been worth, the physiocratic school of economics was the first one to see labor as the sole source of value. However, for the physiocrats, only agricultural labor held value in the products of society. All industrial or non-agricultural labors were unproductive appendages to agricultural labor. So basically we're going to talk a lot about agriculture. <laughs> so physiocracy represents the decomposition of feudal property in economic terms and represents its evolution. All wealth is seen as land and agriculture, 
Land is not yet capital, it is a special form of its existence, and its value lies on the fact that it is part of nature. Now, land is a general natural element, while the mercantile system only really admitted the existence of wealth in the form of precious metals. Thus, the object of wealth obtained its highest degree of universality within the bounds of nature through physiocracy. Land is immediate objective wealth, and land only exists for humans through labor, through agriculture. So before we had agriculture on an industrial scale, the countries made their money through their precious metals, and basically kings were the ones that accumulated that wealth, of course because everybody else was a slave or a serf. But with agriculture, wealth is now seen to be in the land, to be in nature. It's a more general form of wealth. But because you need to work the land or somehow access its products, the essence of wealth becomes transferred to labor. But at the same time, agriculture is the only productive labor that is acknowledged within this movement. Hence, labor is not seen in the abstract, but it's still tied to a natural element. It's only recognized in its particular existence through nature. It is therefore still an, only an alienation of the human since its product created is a specific form of wealth due more to nature than to labor. The land is still recognized as a phenomenon of nature independent from humans. Labor appears as, as an aspect of land. So while we're going through this change in which agriculture becomes the biggest source of wealth for, you know, places around the world, humans are still being alienated because they're only seeing value in the land and they're not recognizing that it's actually humans' labor that's creating that value. So it is still a form of alienation for that person that is working. But since the fetishism of the old external wealth has been reduced to a very simple natural element, the necessary step forward is revealing the general nature of wealth and raising labor in its totality and abstraction as a principle. So because now people see wealth as existing outside the human being, we need to elevate wealth and labor to be at the core of capitalism for people to really be invested in it, I guess. It is argued against physiocracy that agriculture from an economic point of view is not that different from any other industry and that the essence of wealth is not a specific form of labor bound to an element in nature, but the essence of wealth is labor itself. It only turns landed property into alienated humans. It ends its feudal character by declaring agricultural industry as its essence, but it disavows the world of industry and acknowledges feudal system by declaring agriculture the only industry. However, if the essence of industry is now grasp agriculture and not landed property, this essence includes within itself its opposite, for industry incorporates the essence of landed property. So in a world that agriculture is the essential form of labor, well, there are still very few wealthy people that own the land, so it's still some sort of a feudal system, right? Just as landed property is the first form of private property, with agriculture at first seeming as its liberated slave, this repeats itself in the essence of private property, which is labor. Labor appears only as agricultural labor, but then asserts itself as labor in general. And at this point, all wealth has become industrial wealth. The wealth of labor and industry is accomplished labor, just as the factory system is the perfected essence of industry and labor, and just as industrial capital is the accomplished objective form of private property. We can see how it is only at this point that private property can complete its dominion over humans and become, in its most general form, a world historical power. Now, that's it for today's reading, it was very short, but I thought it was really interesting how capitalism has to defend itself by proclaiming that the purpose of capitalism is labor and eventually wealth as well. And like I mentioned earlier, now it makes sense why people fight so aggressively to justify capitalism and to say that, you know, it's a system based on merit, based on hard work. Capitalism has to say that we have to believe that those are the main components of capitalism, otherwise we wouldn't put up with them. 
but anyways let me know your thoughts in the comments of this video thank you for watching if you still are subscribe if you like to continue talking about world domination and thank you to everybody that's been joining me on this journey to read marks i will see you in the next one